Welcome to this video where we'll discuss similarities and differences between linear regression, t-test and ANOVA. We'll first see how an unpaired t-test is calculated and then see how to use linear regression to compute the same thing. At the end of this video we'll compare linear regression and ANOVA. Note that here assume that you are familiar with how to compute the t-test and ANOVA and that you know the basics of linear regression. The examples in this lecture are based on my videos about these methods that you can find on my homepage. We'll first briefly go through how to compute an unpaired t-test. We will here compare the systolic blood pressure of young and middle-aged individuals. Note that this is exactly the same data as we used in the video about unpaired t-tests. So watch that video if you'd like to learn more. If we assume equal variance, just as we do in linear regression, and have an equal sample size of the two groups, we can use the following simple formula to compute the t-statistics of an unpaired t-test. Let's plug in the sample means of the two groups, and the sample variances, and the sample size of each group. Note that the denominator represents the standard error of the difference between the two means, whereas the numerator shows the difference between the two means. The ratio of the difference between the means and the corresponding standard error is negative 2.74, which represents our t statistic. We then use a statistical software to compute the area to the left hand side of negative 2.74 and to the right hand side a positive 2.74 in the t-distribution with 6 degrees of freedom. Since we in this example use a two-sided test, we add the area of the two tails to compute the p-value. We see that the p-value of our unpaired t-test is equal to about 0 0.034. We'll now see that we can compute the exact same p-value with linear regression. Linear regression is usually used to analyze the relationship between two numerical variables. H is here a numerical variable. However, it is actually possible to use linear regression on this data, even though the variable H is here on a categorical scale. Let's code the young group as zero and the middle-aged group as one. We can now think of H as a numerical variable but which can only take the values 0 and 1. If you now fit a simple linear regression model to this data, where we set the young group as the baseline category, we see that the intercept is 124, which corresponds to the value where the line intercepts the y-axis, when x is equal to 0. The intercept of the model actually corresponds to the mean blood pressure of the young group, which is our baseline category or reference group in our example. The slope is estimated to 5, which means that if we increase one unit in x, y is increased by 5. In other words, if we go from 0 to 1, the systolic blood pressure increases by 5. The slope in this case is therefore simply the difference between the mean values, which corresponds to the numerator in the formula to compute the t-statistic. To calculate the t-statistic for the slope, we use the following formula. The numerator is therefore identical to the difference as the one we used to calculate the t-statistic. The standard error of the slope is calculated like this which corresponds to the exact same denominator as the one we used to calculate the t-statistic. This explains why both methods result in the exact same p-value. Note that if we instead would set the middle-aged group as the baseline category, which is therefore now coded as zero, then the intercept would instead correspond to the mean of the middle-aged group and the slope would be negative. However, the p-value will not change because the magnitude of the slope is still the same. Remember that the null hypothesis is defined like this for an unpaired t-test, which states that the two population means are equal. 
This can be reformulated like this, which instead states that the difference between the two population means is equal to zero. In comparison, the null hypothesis in linear regression is usually defined like this, which states that the population slope is equal to zero. These two null hypotheses are, in this example, identical, because if the two means are equal, then the slope should be equal to zero. And if there is a significant difference between the two means, the slope must be significantly different from zero. We'll now see that the p-values computed in linear regression will result in the same p-values as we compute with ANOVA. Remember from the lecture about ANOVA that ANOVA can be used even if you only compare two groups, which will result in the exact same p-value as the two-tailed unpaired t-test. We'll here use three groups to compare ANOVA and linear regression. Remember that the null hypothesis in ANOVA states that all population means are equal. The corresponding null hypothesis in this example for the linear regression model would look like this, where all coefficients or slopes are equal to zero. If we would compute the one-way ANOVA on this example data, we would get an F statistic of 15 and a p-value of about 0 0.0014. Watch the second lecture about ANOVA to see how these numbers are calculated by hand. If we would use the following linear regression model on the same data, where we define the junk group as the baseline category, we would obtain the following estimated parameters. The intercept of this model corresponds to the mean of the junk group. These two variables are coded as 0 and 1 which are sometimes called dummy variables. To predict the blood pressure of the young group, we set these two variables to zero and do the math, which results in a value of 1 and 24. This number is the same as the intercept of our model, which in this example corresponds to the sample mean of the young group. To predict the blood pressure of the middle-aged group, we change the variable for the middle-aged group from 0 to 1, which results in a predicted value of 1 and 29, which corresponds to the sample mean of the middle-aged group. And if we would predict the blood pressure of the old group, we would set the variable for the old individuals to 1, which results in a predicted value that is equal to the sample mean of the old group. Note that this estimated value can be seen as the slope of the regression line between the young and a middle-aged group, whereas this value can be seen as a slope between the young and the old group. The F statistic of a linear regression model is calculated by comparing the proposed model with a null model, which assumes that all coefficients or population slopes are equal to zero. The null model is therefore a model that corresponds to a line which has a slope of zero. The intercept of the null model corresponds to the grand mean in the ANOVA. The residuals in the null model are simply the distances between the horizontal line and the data points. The sum of the squared residuals of this model is 260, whereas the sum of the squared residuals of our proposed model is only 60, because this model fits much better with the data compared to the null model. Note that the sum of the squared residuals of the null model corresponds to the total sum of squares in the ANOVA table, and that the within-group sum of squares corresponds to the sum of the squared residuals of the proposed model. The between-group sum of squares in the ANOVA table is simply the difference between the sum of squared residuals of the null model and the proposed model. This explains why the regression model and ANOVA will result in the exact same F statistic and p-value. Watch the video about calculating ANOVA by hand to see how this table is computed. We have just seen that the ANOVA and linear regression result in identical F statistic and p-value. Since the independent variable in ANOVA can only be on a categorical scale, whereas in linear regression, independent variables can have both categorical and numerical scales.
ANOVA can therefore be seen as a special case of linear regression. If you use a statistical software to fit this model to the data, the software will compare our model with a null model and report the estimated coefficients along with their associated p-values. These p-values are based on the null hypothesis that the individual population parameters are equal to zero. For example, since this p-value is less than the general significance level of 0 0.05, we can reject the second null hypothesis and conclude that the slope between the young and middle-aged group is significantly greater than zero. Likewise, the old individuals have a significantly higher blood pressure compared to the young individuals because the slope is positive and the p-value is less than 0 0.05 we would obtain the exact same p-values if we compute a postdoc test after the ANOVA by using Fisher's LSD method. Remember that Fisher's LSD method is essentially the same as an unpaired t-test, except that it estimates the variance based on all groups when computing the t-statistic of each pairwise comparison. We see that these two p-values correspond to the p-values associated with the estimated parameters beta 1 and 2. The estimated slopes correspond to the differences in the means to the baseline group, which is the young group in our example. However, note that this p-value is not included in the regression table, because the middle-aged group and the old group are not compared in the linear regression model. The different categories are only compared to the baseline category. If we instead set the middle-aged group as the baseline category, then we will be able to compute the p-value that corresponds to the comparison in the blood pressure between the middle-aged group and the old group. This estimated parameter corresponds to the estimated slope between the middle-aged group and the young group. Whereas this estimator represents the slope between the middle-aged group and the old group. So, is there a corresponding regression method that relates to the pair t test and the repeated meshes ANOVA? The linear mixed effect model can be seen as the corresponding regression model for repeated measures. Watch the video about linear mixed effects models to learn more. This was the end of this video about similarities and differences between linear regression, t-test, and ANOVA. Thanks for watching.